So my, my book, Brutalism is Found, is a study of the social experience, architecture and demolition of Robin Hood Gardens. I was drawn to the project as a way of uh, engaging and challenging the crisis of social housing, but also I was concerned to engage with brutalism. And you have the, you know, the mullions and berries as you go along, these really curious things, you know, protruding out partially into your view. Brutalism has been wrongly appreciated only through its material qualities and its monumental scale. And it's not that this is uh, irrelevant or, or, or not important to brutalism, but in the process of this focus on the material qualities, the social qualities of brutalism have been pushed aside to such an extent that they, the aestheticised brutalism is now facilitating uh, the privatisation of council housing. And then over here you see um, the, the Balfon Tower. Uh, you know, this is, this is less than half a mile away. Uh, and for many years, Robin Hood Gardens and Balfon Tower were both you know, terribly stigmatised as concrete monstrosities, sink estates and so forth, by government, by the press, in the media. Uh, but decisions were made as to the future of these two estates. It was decided that Robin Hood Gardens would be demolished and to make way for private rebuild and that Balfon Tower would be privatised uh, and sold on you know, as to property speculators and to middle class home buyers. And so as this, as this separation in their future started to emerge, so we saw a separation in the way they were described in, 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 in the media and by government. And over time, with the help of heritage industries, with the help of culture industries, Balfour Tower became no longer a concrete monstrosity and became instead a modernist masterpiece, a brutalist masterpiece. When it's working class housing, it's stigmatised. When it's middle class housing and sold on the private market, it's celebrated. And I think we, we live in an environment at the moment where brutalism can be both things at once. When it's associated with the working class and council estates, it's denigrated still. When it's associated with you know, coffee table books, um, uh, you know, monochrome, high contrast photography and private sale, then it can be celebrated. My concern with the project was always to engage with Robin Hood Gardens and it was a collaborative project with a photographer, Koya Smear, and we both understood that the story that Robin Hood Gardens was hated by its residents wasn't true. So we wanted to challenge that story but also to understand residents' complicated experience of the estate um, as a living architecture, as a social space and an architectural space and not to give either of those priority. So the Smithsons, as the architects, were clearly vital uh, to understanding the project. We didn't at all want to read the estate only through their eyes, but actually their writing and other aspects of, of their uh, work on paper was very helpful for understanding uh, Robin Hood Gardens. My feeling is that the Smithsons are often misunderstood, partly because there are so many cliches encrusting our understanding of what brutalism is. Um, and also the Smithsons write in a very strange way. Some of it is really extraordinarily wonderful and insightful. Some of it is botched, a kind of botched understanding of their work because it's so experimental. It is so interesting that they insist on how architecture emerges from the grappling of a problem into form. You know, not from their own genius, their own insight, their, their, their minds as if they are distinct from the world that they are working within, but from the problems that they encounter. And this is how I understand Alison and Peter Smithson's uh, argument that brutalism drags a rough poetry from the confused and conflictual forces of the social world. Now, uh, part of this argument is that the social should be understood as coursing through the architectural. It's not simply that brutalism or Robin Hood Gardens provide social housing in an aesthetic way or in an, in an architectural way, but the architecture is interrogating the social realm and it brings the social realm into form, into architectural form.